What's going on guys? So today I'm talking about a Todd Bag Mini Bodega. Very cool knife, very expensive. Got a nice uh, Halloween setting going on here. You can see the tablecloth's down. It is uh, a thunder shower going on right now outside. I got all the Halloween decorations up and I'm actually gonna watch a scary movie right after I'm done here. But I use this and I'm finally ready to do a review on it. I've actually had it for quite some time. Uh, the Todd Bag um, Bodega, the custom version, is a very, very expensive knife. This is the production version, okay? Their Steelcraft series it is actually made by um, Riot Knives, I believe is how it's pronounced. Riot is a Chinese knife company, but they're putting out very, very high-end uh, knives that are made overseas. I mean, I think their cheapest one is 300 something dollars. It's actually one I'm, I'm really interested in. I can, off the top of my head, think of what it's called, but uh, pretty cool designs. But that is the actual manufacturer who is making this, and it, it, they made it to Todd Begg specs. All right, and there are a couple features here that you'll probably only see on one of Todd Begg's custom knives. But just as a reference, this one is pretty steadily sold at $445. That is expensive to me. However, if you want a real bodega, you're looking at about $2,000 plus. I don't know about the minis as far as the customs, but yeah, some of those custom bodegas that are made by Todd in the US, more than $2,000. So if you put it in perspective, it's a quarter of the price for the same design. All right, so I put everything back in the box so you can see how this would arrive. All right, pretty handsome looking box. You see the TV for Todd Begg, Steelcraft series. This one is in black and gold. And again, it's the mini bodega. All right, so you're greeted with a message in this nice gold color. Congratulations on your new Todd Begg Steelcraft Series knife. This card serves as your certificate of authenticity. The SKU number located inside the packaging verifies that your knife is authentic. The goal with our Steelcraft Series is to produce functional knives that are innovative and unique while striving for perfection in form, function, fit, and finish. Our objective is to deliver a knife that will be cherished and appreciate it for generations to come. Thank you, Todd Bag Knives. All right, so this, I do not know if it originally came in the knife or not. I did a trade for this knife, so pretty cool little lanyard, but I don't know if that's original to the knife or not. I wanna say probably not. Then we have a little paper here. It says this car is used to authenticate and register your new knife. So there's a serial number for this particular one, and there's a little QR code or whatever that is on the back, so you can scan that. Probably goes to the website so you can register it. So finally, the knife, which is nestled in this nice foam box. All right, so here's the knife in all its glory. I did want to comment real quick. Again, this is the black and gold. There's some accents like the backspacer, the pocket clip finish, that's all gold. If you really want to see the true colors, this lighting in this video may not be you know, good for that. Uh, you can look at stock pictures and you'll see a lot more of that color. But anyway, uh, flipper design. It is running on ceramic. IKBS system, so we have a, a pivot system. Super smooth, I don't wanna cut myself, but it is very well done. All right, as far as a production knife, it is a higher end production knife, and the fin finish is amazing. And part of why you're paying such a higher price tag is all this detail that's in this design. And again, I mean, if you think that's expensive and you're like, ah, no way, well, the only other way to get this design is to spend that, you know, maybe $1,500 to $2,500 price tag for the custom ones. Um, it is a very popular design. Todd Bag is a very popular knife maker. So a lot of people like these and it is, you know, the cheapest option in order to get this particular design. But there's just a lot of milling. You can see this blade here, it's three inches. Uh, the steel is a CPM S35VN, one of my favorites. You can see the Steelcraft logo on there. Black on the grinds and just kind of a high satin finish on the flat so it is two-tone all right close it is 4.1 inches long full titanium for the handle here all right overall 7.1 inches and it weighs 3.75 ounces um, the blade is flat ground it is a drop point style blade you can see the milling the channel that's cut into here and then obviously the holes that are drilled like I said, just a lot of attention to detail. Um, the back spacer, it has this, uh, it's kind of hard, actually I can flip it over and show you the inside, but it's the same finish that's on this pocket clip, which I believe they call uh, cracked ice or something along those lines. It's really unique, pretty cool. And you'll see that on a lot of uh, Todd's custom work. 
but that finish also travels on the inside of that backspace. So you see we have this uh, text string that's on the outside here, but just towards the top, you can start to see that. That is what it looks like on the inside. So on a bright sunny day, you can see that glistening on the inside of the handle there. Again, pocket clip actually works really, really well. Uh, it is tip up. You can see it's right side carry. All right, and this one has a ceramic ball bearing there on the end. So you have very little contact between the end of the pocket clip or that ball and the frame. So it's really easy to slide in and out of the pocket. Um, it is pretty deep concealed, only a little bit of that knife showing. There's a lantern hole, of course, if you wanted to put it on there. Uh, since I got this, again, I don't know if that's the original lanyard or not, but I did not use the lanyard. Just used it, you know, as is in the pocket. Carried very nicely. Like I said, very easy to get in and out. Perfect lockup. No blade play at all. I believe there is a steel insert that's nestled in there. Actually, you can see that right there. So you get good positive lockup with this. What's really interesting about this one to me is I never quite felt this type of texturing. Not only the whole handle scale is contoured this way on both sides, of course, but this, uh, this pattern in here is a super nice feeling. It's almost like pre-worn. I mean, it's slightly worn just because it was carried and used, but it just, it feels really, really good. I never felt any knife that was, you know, really similar to this. So it is quite unique in that respect. As far as the design, pretty versatile. I only can get a three and a half finger grip. So again, this is the mini um, Bodega. I would imagine I'd probably prefer the full size just for my hands. But again, a very comfortable three, three finger, pretty much three and a half. That pinky sometimes has nowhere to go. It's a little lonely. But you can see the flipper turns into a guard here. Um, there is a cutout in the frame, so your, your thumb naturally lands here, which is kind of interesting because there's no jimping here, which I personally don't care about. In order to use the jimping on the spine here, I have to literally kind of choke up. I have to purposely lift that thumb up a little bit higher than I'm normally, you know, resting my thumb. But it is very positive, very good. Jimping is a hard thing to really just kind of please people in general because everyone has their own, you know, specific likes and dislikes. Some jimping to me is, is ticklish. Honestly, sometimes when there's big old deep jimping, it's like it tickles my thumb. Sometimes it's too aggressive and it kind of hurts my thumb. This is right in the middle. I think the right way to go with jimping is smaller, you know, cutouts. Multiple smaller cutouts as opposed to like two or three huge ones. That never seems to work out. Um, but yeah, choking up like this, very positive grip. Just super, super comfortable knife. Very, very comfortable in the hand. Like I said, I personally probably prefer the larger one just to get a full four finger grip. Um, it just really, really done well. Locks up great. All right, so blade centering here. You see there is a little jimping on the bottom of that. So if you want to hold it in reverse grip, your thumb would naturally land on that. You had to use it for a stabbing motion. I did notice that there's not a whole lot of point on this one. Let me get that to focus here. Um, I wouldn't say it's dull, but it's not super pointy. Could be a positive, could be a negative. I happen to like some knives I like kind of extra pointy. In this particular blade style, I guess it's not a big deal, but when you have those super slender blades, you want that to really come to a nice point. Overall, I really do like this knife. It is pretty unique. I've never had something quite like this. Um, I don't know, I did trade for this one. I don't know if I would buy this particular knife. Uh, so overall, I mean, it's a really, really nice knife. All right, and it's probably worth the money to most people. Uh, I did trade for this one. I was very interested in trying this. Uh, I talked to a couple people who had them, different versions of them, and just they love them. So I was very interested in getting one when I was finally offered it in a trade, I did jump on it. Uh, this is not probably one that I would personally buy just for the price tag. Now, if you like Todd's stuff, like I said, this is the cheapest option to try one of his designs. Uh, as far as I know, if you know you know a cheaper version of a, a bodega or a mini bodega, certainly post that down below. But I believe the Steelcraft you know, version is the cheap option at almost $450. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for that price tag, Personally, I'd probably go with, um, you know, two, like $250 knives. That's just me personally, just because I like trying more stuff. As opposed to buying one $1,000 knife, I'd love to get $1,000 knives. Uh, but it has nothing to do with this particular knife. I mean, if you're into higher-end, semi-production, semi-custom type stuff, um, this is something I think you would really appreciate. 
for a lot of you guys out there, you get stuck on, you know, blade steel and cost and manufacturing location, right? So in that respect, we have a $450 knife made in China, uh, sporting S35BN. You know, what does that mean to you? Well, probably something different than it means to me. I will say as well that after trying this one, I am very, very interested in trying some of the uh, Riot knives that are available. Um, just, they did a really good job as far as manufacturing this. You know, when you're spending that much money, over $400 for a knife, it, it's got to fit together well, it's got to feel good in the hand, and it's got to have some bonus things you don't get with other knives, and that this one has all that. It just comes down to whether you like this design or not. The performance is definitely there. Um, the coating that's on here, the black coating, held up very well. It didn't scratch, as far as I could see. I do have to clean it up, but I don't see any, any deep scratches or anything like that. Uh, of course, the uh, S35BN did perform very well. It is a slicing machine, just like pretty much all uh, blades sporting that higher-end steel. But just overall, what stands out to me is just this finish on this scale. That, that light contouring and the combination of this, I don't even know what you'd call that. It just it feels really good. It just really, really feels good, unlike any other knife that I've had before. So, yeah, if you're interested in some Todd Begg stuff, uh, this might be a good place to start. But, yeah. If you guys have a mini bodega, let me know down in the comments which version you have, what you think of it, if you love it. If you have a custom bodega, let me know, you know, what you think of that. Maybe you can compare them, you know, for the other viewers that are reading the comments and stuff. But, overall, it is a high-quality knife. I think it's worth the price tag if you're going for that design. Like I said, for me personally, if I had $445, I probably wouldn't buy this one. Not because I don't like the design, but just because I'd prefer to have a couple, you know, cheaper knives. So thanks for watching. I'm heading off to watch something scary. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.